just seen. A chest drainage system provides a means for removing air, blood, or fluid from the pleural space or mediastinal cavity. To better understand how a chest drain works and contributes to a patient's recovery, let's review that is known as the diaphragm, which is also composed of muscle. The interior of the thoracic cavity can be divided into three distinct areas, the mediastinum and two separate chambers for each lung. The inside of the rib cage is lined by a membrane called the parietal pleura, while the lungs are covered by another membrane called the pulmonary or visceral pleura. Under normal conditions, these two pleural surfaces are closely held to one another, being separated only by a very thin film of lubricating fluid called pleural fluid. The pleural fluid keeps the two pleural surfaces in contact while allowing them to slide smoothly over one another during breathing. The presence of negative pressure, or vacuum, between these two membranes is what helps hold the visceral pleura in close contact with the parietal pleura at all times. During respiration, air moves in and out of the lungs in response to changes in intrapleural pressure caused by movement of the diaphragm and chest wall. Under normal conditions, there is always negative pressure in the pleural cavity. The degree of negativity, however, changes during respiration. When air, fluid, or blood enters the space between these two membranes, the space created is known as a pleural space. This is an abnormal occurrence and results in labored breathing. When the chest wall is opened, either by surgery or chest injury, the inrush of air causes the vacuum in the patient's pleural cavity to escape. Since the normal negative pressure or vacuum is no longer present, the lungs may partially or fully collapse as they depend upon this negativity or vacuum to stay fully expanded. Without full lung expansion, the patient experiences pain and great difficulty in breathing. If air accumulates in the pleural space and has no means to escape, pressure within this space can rise significantly. This is known as a tension pneumothorax and can result in a potentially life-threatening situation known as a mediastinal shift. That's where the chest tube and chest drainage system come in. To restore the chest to its normal condition, all air and fluid must be removed. The purpose of any chest drainage device is to help re-establish normal vacuum pressures by removing air or fluid in a closed one-way fashion. For pneumothorax, the chest tube is typically placed anteriorly near the lung's apex. For a hemothorax or pleural effusion, the chest tube is placed more laterally in the lower part of the chest to facilitate more efficient fluid drainage. Frequently, two catheters are inserted. The need for chest drainage is also required following open heart surgery or chest trauma to evacuate any pooling blood, which if left in the mediastinal cavity, can cause cardiac distress or tamponade. As you can see, chest drainage is indeed a life-saving procedure and one of the most important services a physician and nurse clinician can render.